Hey guys, uh, not talking about arcade games right now, but uh, I didn't know if I probably mentioned in some of my other videos. Uh, I collect the old Atari cartridges, mainly the Atari 2600, and uh, I've got I've got a stack of them right here. I used to keep them uh, sorted according to rarity. Right now, I've just got them mainly sorted uh, according to like manufacturer. I've got like uh, some of the first old Atari games. I know you can't see the lighting's kind of poor in here right now, but uh, on the bottom, I've got like uh, uh, some of the first cartridges made by Atari that were just text labels. Some of them were even uh, numbered text labels. Then it starts going to the Atari picture labels on the second shelf, on up to some of their uh, fancier kind of uh, foiled labels. They're kind of a bright silver. Some of them are gray. And uh, most of those are like, uh, like over in here, we've got like Millipede, Crystal Castles, uh, Galaxian, Dig Dug, stuff like that. More of the arcade games and stuff, not the original titles. Um, and then going on up, I, I mean, I've got I, I've got some of the later Atari, the red cartridges there. Those are some that were released during the uh, latest part of the life of the Atari before they quit manufacturing them. And they just started using those red labels. It was a little cheaper, I guess. And... Uh, they didn't use the uh, silver foil labels anymore. Then we've got some Coleco cartridges, the white ones there. You've got stuff like Carnival, um, Donkey Kong Jr., Zaxxon, Mr. Do, Fincher, uh, a couple others. And uh, I think I've got uh, maybe some Mythicon carts and some Epix carts, a couple things like that. Uh, a rare Activision blue label cart there. There's a few of those that you can come across. That's uh, Demon Attack. I don't know if you can see it in the video on the very end. And then you got some Parker Brothers stuff on the next shelf, stuff like Frogger and Spider-Man, Empire Strikes Back, Hubert. Uh, and then um, those actually look like Atari cartridges, but those were put out by Sears. There's some uh, picture label carts, and uh, then those are some Sears text label carts and some variations. Uh, like you can see, I've got a couple of different Space Invaders there. I've got. Uh, two different versions of the text label for, from Sears for Space Invaders. So I, I collect uh, label variations and uh, you know picture labels and text labels, different stuff like that. Um, then you've got uh, these strange shaped carts. These are like, uh, I think they called them the INTV or NTV. Uh, they're, they're basically, they're like in television cartridges that have a little adapter plugged on the end of them because the Intellivision cartridges look very similar to those except for the end is made big enough to go onto an Atari console. Um, I think it's Mattel and Intellivision. Um, my Atari knowledge right now is a little rusty because I haven't been really actively collecting for just a few years, you know, um, or in a few years because I started this like 10 years ago and in the last few years I've been messing with arcade machines more than anything. And these are actually getting dusty sitting here. I need to dust them off. But uh, then we've got a magic labels that stuff like Demon Attack. Uh, one of my favorites, Dragonfire. A few others. I got a couple of rare ones from a magic there. It's kind of rare. No Escape, uh, Moon Sweeper, Fathom. Those are a little bit more rare. Um, then we've got a, pretty much a whole row of uh, Activision, which makes some of the best games for the Atari. Um, great games like um, Star Master. That's fantastic. It's it's much better, in my opinion, than Star Raiders, which uses a separate control, uh, little controller that was made just for Star Raiders and never was, to my knowledge, used for anything else. It's compatible with these things called the keyboard controllers. They're basically the same controller, and that can be used with a couple other games, like I think maybe Brain Games, and there was another one. Um, but you've got other things like Sequest. That's awesome. Crackpots. That's a faded label. I've got a better one over here that I haven't tested that I'm going to replace in my collection and sell the more faded one there. Uh, Pitfall, of course. Everybody knows Pitfall, and I've got Pitfall 2. A lot of people don't know they made Pitfall 2. It's a little bit more rare. Uh, Pitfall loose may be worth you know close to 10 bucks. Pitfall 2 sometimes goes for around 20 loose. If you have it in the box, you might get upwards of 30 something to $50 if it's in the box. Maybe a little less than that. Hero is a very nice Activision title, and it's kind of hard to come across. You know, it's probably worth maybe about 20, 25 bucks, uh, depending on what kind of condition it's in. That's probably my most rare on the rarity scale cartridge right there. It's Atari Video Cube. Um, it was actually, it was actually called Rubik's Cube, 
and then they put out this version Atari Video Cube and there's slightly more number of these out uh, Atari Video Cube um, exact same game, exact same picture it's just not called Rubik's Cube on it uh, this is a 7 on a rarity scale of 1 to 10 and um, you could probably find it for I know under $30 but sometimes it does sell for as much as $30 to $35 lots of times probably no more than 20 to 25 I probably picked it up for about 8 bucks and it has a great label on it um, the uh, Rubik's Cube version is actually like an 8 on the rarity scale so it's much more desirable you can get a little bit more money out of that if you were a seller but uh, then up top I've got uh, some Sega cartridges you know it's it's Atari but it's put out by Sega Congo Bongo, Tax Skin, Star Trek uh, Star Trek's a pretty cool game I remember playing it way back in the 80's when I was a kid and uh, it's called a strategic operation simulator and it actually has like I, th I think if I remember correctly three separate screens that are showing different data and and uh, like a play field area a data area and something else on the screen all at once and that was pretty advanced for the Atari you know times uh, book Rogers sub scan then you've got some uh, US games uh, cartridges there commando raids Nick and Pete word zapper towering inferno space jockey uh, and then I think these are Apollo games by Apollo if I'm not mistaken do do yeah these are all Apollo games by Apollo shark attack racquetball infiltrate space chase a couple different label variations of space cavern and then we've got let's see these are US games here mad gopher entombed picnic got a couple more of those over on another shelf I haven't tested yet but they're in nice minty shape some of these are more war looking than others some look practically brand new like this one it looks pretty close to brand new almost a new looking cartridge I have a, a few of these like that and uh, but some have got you know a bit of wear in them uh, especially like I said like crack pots here good gracious the label it looks not too bad it's got what they call Actaplac Act to plaque is uh, it's just the uh, type of uh, type of glue they use for these labels from Activision. They should have, I don't know, done some better testing. But over the years, it really starts to bleed through on the labels. And most Activision carts, even the best ones, exhibit this. It's you know you got to find one that's really been in a a good uh, temperature and humidity controlled place for years and years for it not to have at least a few specks of this and this one has been in the sun obviously it's it's supposed to be purple just like that so it's completely faded but I have a much nicer version over here on another shelf that I just haven't tested in my console yet and it's going to replace this one and this one will get sold on eBay probably it's not a rare one at all oink that's that's pretty rare you don't see this much it's got a pig on it and then again you see the act plaque the uh, the uh, glue that's fading through on the label there and it, it's a little faded on the end too but this is more of a rare one I don't, I don't see that a lot on eBay um, but you know like I say some, some of them are like practically like brand new and, and some of them got some use in them and uh, some of them got a little bit of loose labels there which I just need to use some you know some glue and just barely just tack that back I don't want to put a lot of glue on there because sometimes even modern glue can can bleed through the label I don't want to damage it but um you know I you know I, I see some in a lot that I don't have and I'll buy a whole lot and uh, just to get maybe three or four cartridges I don't have and then I'll sell the duplicates or I'll look through the duplicates and see if the labels are much nicer and if the cartridges are in better shape than the ones that I currently have and I'll sell my old version of the same game and uh, this right here is probably a couple of hundred maybe on this rack and then over here these are the ones that I haven't tested yet I've got a, a bunch piled up here um, most recently this is my recent purchase I haven't purchased Atari carts in a while this is my most recent recent this is a Spectra video cartridge um, I didn't finish showing you over here on the on the rack but there's a few other game makers there I think this is seems like this is made by yeah Fox like 20th Century Fox games of the century that's the the brand of this Megaforce and Turmoil Alien and Fast Eddie and Deadly Duck and then we've got Data Age put out a few games 
airlock, journey escape, Bermuda Triangle. They've got some other ones. Uh, they got a game called Bugs. Uh, can't remember all of them. There's not that many put out by Data Age. Maybe ten. Uh, there's, there's a pretty rare one called Frankenstein or Frankenstein's Monster. It's probably the most rare Data Age. And then here's a Spectre Vision. It's got some staining there on the cartridge that I never could get to come off. Pretty good uh, actual label. This is Tapeworm. Sounds gross, doesn't it? <laughs> to be honest, I can't remember if it's just a copy of the old Snake game or what on the PC. I think it is. And Gangster Alley. This is similar, I think, to Hogan's Alley. And you've got targets or gangsters or something you shoot on the screen, if I'm not mistaken, but you use your joystick. You don't have to have any type of a, a light gun for that. But that's my most recent pickup. I, I paid a few dollars for this on eBay, and nobody bid against me. Um, let's see. Skeet Shoot. This is a very nice version, no label damage. Well, I take that back. The end, there is a little bit of scuffing on the end label. It's just right where the crease where the two parts of the cartridge come together. A little bit of wear there, but the, the front label is in really great shape for Skeet Shoot. Usually it doesn't look that good. I've got a I've got one down in this pile of cartridges here. It's a skeet shoot that I was keeping and, and it actually has the end label tore off and somebody put a piece of tape on it and rewrote it and it doesn't look nowhere near as good as this, so it's getting sold and I'm keeping this one. That's my main version. There's a Sears version of uh Yars Revenge. The Sears picture carts, I think they came out later. They started off with text carts and then they, they started adding the pictures, which most of the time um, it's hard to find these picture carts by Sears. If you can see the Sears logo there, if you can find them, they're just a little bit more rare than the Atari version of the same game. And uh, this one, I actually think can't remember if this is a four on the rarity scale or a five, but it's pretty nice, pretty nice uh, label on that one. And I've got, I think, Pac-Man and a couple of others by Sears over there. There's a very odd company there. I made this cartridge, Zymag, and this is a goofy looking game. I, I can't remember, I don't even think I've tested or anything, but I got it just because it was slightly rare. Dishaster. So it's got a crazy looking, very dorky girl on there with some dishes breaking around her. I don't know what the object of the game is, I'll have to look it back up, but I bought it basically because it was rare and I probably won it, won it on eBay without too much competition. Um, a few others, there's my, my good version of crack pots, well I say my good, it's still got some fading on the end, but it's it's better than the other, you can read crack pots. Not not quite as much act plaque on that label. Uh, let's see, Frostbite, that's a pretty good one. Still got the act plaque, that's a pretty good game, similar in a way to Frogger. <clears throat> you're an Eskimo and you're jumping around on, on little ice floats uh, in a river and you've got a bear in the background. I guess that's probably an obstacle. I have tried this, but it's been a few years. Uh, a little bit faded on the end. Here's a couple of minty, I think, US Games cartridges. I don't turn my cartridges over. These are pretty, pretty mint by US Games. Egomania. And I think this is a chicken plopping eggs out and the bears catching them in a basket so it might be kind of like kaboom uh... yeah use with paddle controllers as you can see very nice condition for its age this was a 1982 game so we're talking thirty years old pretty darn good for thirty years old you know old atari cartridges being kept up pretty good and uh... then this one by the same company u.s. games squeeze box and I don't remember what this game is about. Joystick controllers. Looks like a breakout type game, but it can't be. <laughs> it's probably got to be a little different than that. Pretty nice condition there. And in the background you can see I've got some boxed carts. Some that have actually been unopened. I've got like multiple copies of Venture. I won in an auction for next to nothing. And they're completely sealed cellophane over them. Not too many like that, but I've got a few boxed versions. I got a boxed version of Star Raiders with the controller in there and everything. Uh, Missile Command, Combat, Pole Position, Pac-Man, uh, Miss Pac-Man, Video Pinball, and I know you can't see, but beside the blue cartridge Video Pinball to the left, there's actually uh, what's called a Taiwan Cooper. Uh, that's the name of the company. It's um, 
it's like um, it seems like it's a Mexican company or something. They they put out uh, cartridges for Atari, and uh, they it's the same game as Pitfall, the one that's there. And um, I can't remember what the name is on there, but <laughs> they talk about it. I, th I think it may be called Pitfall, but they they talk about it on the back. Really crazy. They say Jungle Girl, you know, must get away from all these different traps and stuff. It sounds really funny. It's got some weird. English, as you would call it, you know, it doesn't sound like they're speaking in English on there, but they did their best job. And that Kubrick card on top, I think, is a Coleco Vision, if I'm not mistaken. It's not for an Atari. Uh, I got it with a lot, and they they thought it was Atari and threw it in there, but it's slightly different than the uh, Kubrick for the Atari 2600. And right back there, I've got some pretty minty later release 2600 cards. I got these from a local store as you can see on there 99 cents it's a store a couple of cities away it's, it's maybe about 45 minutes away from here and they sell these sometimes every once in a while they get some in with the manual and everything and they seal them up and really nice labels on these they still sold them to me for 99 cents which is what their price is for just their loose carts without manuals or anything and that that was so hilarious that's a pretty good excuse me kind of a space simulation game this is a boxing game but like I said, these were near the end of the lifespan of the 2600, and they started making all the labels kind of a plain red, and they had a little bit smaller picture on them. And there's several other down there. I haven't tested a couple rows of carts underneath there. I'm not going to take them all out, but most recently got a couple of stacks of manuals kind of sad actually a lady's son had passed away and she was selling lots of his stuff that he used to mess with on eBay didn't get the lowdown on it but she had a, a huge stack of manuals on eBay for a buy it now of just a few bucks and you know I didn't know the story then but she just sent me all this stuff it was even more sent to me than what was shown in the pictures and I've just got bukus of manuals you know because you know Atari manuals here's one that's how thin they are and you see the stacks pretty tall and compressed and there's another stack I think there's a few in there it might be Nintendo 64 but that's a pretty good bit of manuals there I mean there's probably there's probably about 40 something there just in that little bit and uh, they're mostly the common games and stuff but anyway it's been about 17 minutes I've been rattling on about Atari but this is just starting the video here um, I came across an auction well not an auction it was something for sale on Craigslist here. And uh, I was sitting here thinking, well, um, that looks interesting. So, you know, I opened up multiple tabs. I was looking at some options and stuff, and someone was selling these uh, systems here. It's a Sears Video Arcade 2 and an Atari 2600. Well, they had a few controllers and a few cartridges sitting there, like all commons, you know, no rare cartridges really. And then. I kind of looked and I seen this one cartridge. If you would look closely, I don't know if it's going to focus, but it's the blue cartridge right there. And I said, that does not look familiar at all. I said, I bet you that's for an Atari home computer or something, because it just looked funny. But every time that happens, I always start looking closer and closer at the pics and I try to figure out what it could be. Well, they had one more picture. Let me click here on the side, it shows it close up. And when you get closer, you may not be able to tell in the video. Let me turn this. I don't want to make it go crazy, but let me turn it so maybe you can kindly make it out a little bit. It's very hard for you probably to see in the video, but it says at the top of the cartridge, Video Soft. And I couldn't read any of the other text, but I immediately started looking up the company Video Soft on uh, Atari Age. And I found out that listed on Atari age there was only I think one cartridge let me take a look we'll go on Atari age here right quick and we'll just put in a search for the company we'll go down and we'll say Videosoft begin search only thing they put out ever was color bar generator but look at the rarity of this sucker. This is a 9 on the rarity scale. It only goes up to 10. 
nine is a really rare cartridge. And I said, color bar generator, said, that's got to be it. I said, let's look at a picture of it so you can look at a scan of the cartridge. And sure enough, looks like the exact cartridge from the auction, Video Soft Color Bar Generator. And it's got the text on here just telling it, all it is is basically it generates color bars so that you can check color televisions or it even has one that you can help check the color output of the Atari 2600 with. And uh, I don't know how many was uh, put out, but I just know it's very rare. And so I started looking at where this was at. This was uh, in Georgia, uh, Marietta, Georgia. And I contacted the seller and I said, hey, I said, uh, um, would you consider just selling one cartridge out of this lot and mailing it to me, you know? And I figured I'd take a risk. I said, I could send you a PayPal payment or send you a check. And I wasn't trying to be dishonest or anything like that. It's just, I mean, he, he put this whole lot up for sale for 60 bucks. And um, I thought, you know, I'm always buying lots, trying to look for rare cartridges on eBay and stuff. And this is just a lot that he only wants 60 bucks for. And uh, he was selling it. Somebody was cleaning out their mother and father's house, and uh, they were just selling a bunch of junk. And he was just wanting to sell every bit of this for 60 bucks. And I really don't have the other two consoles. This is the Darth Vader version of the Atari 2600, it looks like. And the Sears Arcade 2, Sears Video Arcade 2, which is basically a clone of the Atari 2800. The Atari 2800 was a 2600 console that was uh, marketed to Japan and uh, it didn't sell very well and I think the Famicom had already come out in Japan so uh, they just started selling that version it's kind of a sleeker design it looks kind of like an Atari 7800 but it's got LED lights and stuff on it um, I'll show you there's a little better picture of it Sears Video Arcade and there's the 2800 which sold in Japan. They're basically identical. It's just the name of the system is different. It says Sears Video Arcade on this one and it's got a silver label that says Atari 2800 and that's the one that sold in Japan. And uh, wouldn't mind having it. It plays all the 2600. It's just a slicker version but you know I didn't necessarily want it. And um, then let's see if I can find it. There we go. There's the Darth Vader Atari. It's a black version. And uh, the black version is very similar to the four switch wood grain version noted by four switches here and the difficulty switches are on the back side of the unit. They changed those later and, and put little tiny slide switches on the back for difficulty. And uh, so these started out as a wood grain console with six switches. Then they went to a wood grain console with four switches. The very earliest ones were called Heavy Sixers. They had six switches and they were, were a lot heavier plastic and they had some shielding and thicker plastic on the sides and everything. It looked just a little different wood grain and they're worth the most. But I didn't have a, a Vader system. I used to have one when I was a kid and I do like the way they look. I like the white Atari logo down there on the uh, left front corner. And I said, well, I said I could buy the whole setup. And anyway, I just I contacted the guy and I said, hey, you know, would you sell just the cartridge? I said, because you know, by the time I pay for you know enough gas to drive 150 miles there and 150 miles back, you know, it may not be worth my trip. And he started offering me, you know, he'd knock twenty dollars off. He'd sell me the entire lot for forty bucks and give me a quote on shipping, and I could pay the forty bucks plus the shipping. And I thought about it, but I still wasn't sure about it because this is not an auction. And I don't have any protection, you know. I'll just be paying for this and just depending on him to ship it to me. So he could have my money and just keep it, you know, if I send him a check or if I just make a PayPal payment, you know. And I didn't want to go through any type of dispute if he didn't send me the items or anything. So I said, hey, I said, would you just sell me the one cartridge? Because I told him I had the other games and I already had a couple of Atari consoles. And he wrote me back and said, sure, if I didn't want the whole lot, he'd sell me just that cartridge for 20 bucks and he'd mail it to me. Well, he's real hard to reach through email, so he hasn't contacted me back in a few days. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been thinking about, you know, trying to call him. He did leave a phone number on here. Um, his phone number's on Craigslist, so I don't guess it matters if I show it now. And, and uh, and I thought about calling him and just asking him, you know, hey, you know, maybe I, I will swing by there and just pick it all up, you know, but I didn't, you know, I didn't really want to make the trip, so I'm still trying to decide. I'm like, you know, should I make the trip and buy the whole lot? Because, I mean, I could use 
really both systems in my uh, classic console collection. I have a lot of old consoles and stuff like that, but I do already have, I think, two Ataris. I had three. I gave one to a nephew. It was a six-switch uh, Woody. It wasn't a heavy sixer. I still have a uh, six-switch uh, heavy sixer that's boxed up, and I have a uh, four-switch Woody that I use mostly for testing and stuff. And uh, we used it here recently at a LAN party and just played some classic games and stuff. But um, I started looking on some other sites too. And let's see. This is a uh, rarityguide.com. And it shows uh, you can put in whatever you want and it'll jump to the uh, different cartridges, like alphabetically listed. And uh, don't know if you can see, but color bar generator there. Made by Videosoft, put out in 1984. 94%, it's like a gauge showing the rarity. It's all the way up to 94%. It's actually the highest rated just here in the seas that I'm on, if you take a look. It's barely higher than Big Co's copy cart, which would let you copy cartridges. But anyway, 94%. New in the box, they're rating it. Where'd I go? Oops, I lost my place. Video soft. New in the box, they're rating it worth $1,503. Complete in the box, it's worth $800. And loose, $308. That is the, I guess, what it has went for in the past on eBay, possibly. But I got to looking further, and uh, I actually found out that this cartridge complete in the box has sold for as much as $4,500 on eBay. And I'm like, wow. But uh, $308 for loose is pretty good. I don't think they have any paperwork or the box for this cartridge. But I looked on some other sites, too. Um, here's a site where a guy was just super excited that he actually found a complete in box when he bought it for a buy it now price of $10 and he didn't know it was complete in box. The seller sent it to him and when he got it and opened it he found out it had the box, the user's guide and everything. And he was just ecstatic, you know, because he said that, you know, usually um it goes for uh let's see what it says. Do, 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 do. Um takes the value from in the hundreds to apparently into the thousands. If you see right there, so this is a collector. And he also picked up this nice Waterworld, Sword Quest Waterworld, for 20 bucks. buy it now, but the post office smashed the box. This was not only, you know, completely mint, I mean, I don't even think the cellophane had been off of it, and the post, the post office smashed his box, so I feel bad for that guy, but I'd like to have Sword Quest Waterworld too, but uh, apparently Videosoft Color Generator is more rare than that, according to the sales, you know, in the past. Um, Here's uh, Atari2600.com's price guide. And they've got, I don't know if this is going to focus. Anyway, Videosoft, I've got it highlighted there. Hard for you to read there. Color bar generator. They've got cartridge only and complete in box. And it's listed. Let me see if I can take the highlight off of here just so you can see beside the mouse pointer. Listed for $282.07 loose or $2,314.03 if it's complete in the box. And rarity of 10. And the trend is it's rising in price amongst collectors. Okay. Here is a list on racketboy.com. They did a rundown of some very rare and valuable Atari cartridges, and this was listed under cartridges that weren't necessarily gains, but could be like utilities. They got a magic card there. But here's Color Bar Generator, and they've got it listed at, at, for a value between $250 and $800. And it just tells you a little bit about you know what it was used for and all. Uh, let's see. And here's Atari Guide, at Atari Guide, nice site. They've got it listed as a 9.5 ultra rare auction value, $200. There's a little screenshot of just the different patterns that that cartridge actually puts out to test. But uh, just really wanted to share this with you guys. It's really cool. I don't think there's anything else I got on here to show you. 
But anyway, nine on the uh, Atari Age and uh, nine and a half. Ultra rare on Atari Guide. Possibly worth a couple hundred bucks loose. Maybe a little more in the box into the thousands. But even loose, depending on what a collector wants to pay, the bidding could go higher if I ever wanted to sell it. But, I mean, I'm really interested in owning it. It, I guess it would be nice to sell it and make a real quick few hundred dollars turnaround profit. But, you know, I am a collector of these Atari cartridges, so just, just having it would be cool. But he's got some others that are just very plain. You got Gorf, Adventure, uh, Asteroid, Street Racer, Pac-Man, Space Invaders. Now, the one thing about Space Invaders there, it's uh, second from the left beside Tennis there. It actually does look like a Sears version, and I don't have that. If you just look at the font of the text really close, it does look like the Sears version, and I'm always looking out for Sears versions, uh, especially the picture cards. But the other ones are just like Pac-Man and Yars Revenge. They look very plain, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. I'm waiting for the guy to contact me back. It's been two or three days. He hasn't emailed me back, even though he agreed, you know, to sell it to me. I'm just waiting for him to respond again. I sent him one more email just, you know, saying that I could send him a PayPal payment or send the money to his address if he'd just give me the information. So just waiting on him. I don't want to push him too much, you know, he, but I don't want to wait too long because somebody else might find this too. I mean, you've really, when you're collecting, you've really got to look close at pictures and I even take and copy and paste stuff sometimes. I'll copy and paste it into my paint program and I'll rotate it and look real close and I'll start comparing it to images on Atari Guide and Atari Age and I'll finally figure out what a cartridge is and I'll find out it's a rare, you know. I always do that for rarity of five to ten and try to figure out if I can buy a lot and resell the other cartridges or something and you know, see if it's worth my time. But that would be, I guess, my new holy grail if I got it. You know, it's not exciting or anything, but it's pretty rare. Just wanted to share that with you guys, and I uh, guess I'll let you go for now, and uh, I'll let you know, I'll update you on what happens with the cartridge. Well, guys, I just got confirmation. It's uh, been one more day since the last little clip uh, where I was telling you about the Atari cartridge. And here is the VideoSoft cartridge. Looks to be in excellent shape. I think there's maybe one little scuff right there. It's hard to see for you guys, I imagine. But uh, this is a picture of the cartridge that the guy wanted to confirm before he shipped it to me. So he did get back to me, and he agreed to sell it to me. And I just sent him a, a $20 PayPal payment. And uh, I told him I'd pay him $20 for the cart and to help cover shipping. And, you know, he's not a collector, so he doesn't value these like I do. And, I mean, he, he doesn't know that it's probably worth a good bit more. And I'm not trying to cheat him or anything. It's just, you know, I look for these things in the wild and, and uh, you know, in thrift stores or jockey lots and, and online and everything. And, and this is just in a big group that he was going to sell off with two systems for 60 bucks. So, you know... I'm giving him 20 bucks for the one cart, and it is worth something to collectors. But you know, to most average people, it's not worth anything. You know, it's it's not even a game. It's just a small utility, but it is rare. But uh, looks like it's in great shape. I'm going to be real happy to add it to my collection. Uh, hopefully, I won't get the urge to sell it. It would be neat to see how much it would bring at auction. Uh, maybe one day I would put it up at auction and, and set kind of a high reserve price. And if somebody wanted to buy it at that price, they'd be welcome to it. But if not, I could see you know what these things are going for nowadays. Uh, like I said, uh, loose carts seem to be going in average from $200 and up. You know, uh, I think I've seen one site quote as much as $800. But anyway, I'm going to let you go for now, and uh, hopefully he will get this shipped to me. I, I asked him to package it as well as he could because I have had a couple of carts get crushed uh, when people didn't very, you know, didn't take much care, you know, in packaging them. They just put maybe one coating of bubble wrap around it or put it in a, a bubble mailer, a bubble wrap mailer, and um, you know, I've had, uh, I think a, a Porky's cart got crushed, and uh seems like a Raiders of the Lost Ark, one of the rare label versions, got crushed one time. But uh, anyway, hopefully I'll get this within the next week, and uh, I'll finish the video and let you see it when I get it here. Hey guys, just got a little update on the uh, color bar generator cartridge for the Atari 2600. Uh, the guy does have it in the mail and it's on the way to me and I have a delivery confirmation number and uh, I have looked that up at USPS.com 
and it does show that it was sent out today which is uh, Friday the 27th and uh, it was sent out at about noon and it's on its way here it should be here by Saturday so uh, we're having a land party Saturday so that'd be pretty cool to get a rare Atari cartridge to show the guys on that day but uh, I also got an interesting email back I just wanted to see if the guy had shipped it yet because it's been about three or four days since I made payment and uh, <laughs> I got a cute email back and I was wondering if something like this might happen but I'll just read it to you you may not be able to see it here on the screen but anyway uh, I just pasted it in a notepad to protect any confidential information from him or anything you know but anyway it says uh, hey cartridge went out today delivery confirmation number 0311 1660001 should be there in the next couple of days after I got payment from you my collector sense started to tingle I've been collecting vintage toys for a while and something about this transaction seemed familiar. On a hunch I did a Bing search and found out the worth of the item, possibly up to $200. Now the scumbag in me thought about just refunding your payment and listing it on eBay. However, I have the unfortunate problem of having, having parents that brought me up with morals. Damn them. In addition, I know the thrill of the hidden find and how you sweat bullets until it comes in. My fault for not doing more research on this item. Congrats on the find and best of luck to you in the future. Chris, DVM, which I can only guess means doctor of veterinary medicine. So he must be doing <laughs> probably a little better than me. I, I probably don't make as much as a vet, you know, pretty sure I don't. But, um, you know, uh, you know, I wrote him back and I told him, I said, you know, well, you know, you're right. You know, I knew the value of the cartridge, but, you know, I look for these things in the wild and I consider Craigslist, you know, just like a flea market or something. And if somebody's selling something on there for a certain price, you know, it'd be kind of weird for me to say, hey, you know, you can get $200 for this online if you put it on eBay and then, you know, try to say, but will you sell it to me for 20 <laughs> Because I don't have the money to pay a couple hundred bucks for an Atari cartridge, you know. I mean, I'd have to really have some extra dough to do that, but, um, you know, that's not going to happen anytime soon. And, uh, you know, I talked to him for a while. I told him the type of guy I was and that I was collecting them mainly for myself, not really to resale, even though I would like to know what it would bring in an auction. I, I just want it for my collection mainly. It's rare, and I'll hand it down to somebody in my family later, and uh, maybe... They can sell the entire collection and have them a very small nest egg for some something they need in the future. But, um, you know, for now, I just wanted it for my collection. I wasn't going to buy it and just turn around and make money off of it. But uh, in the reply I sent back to him, you know, I told him, I said, you know, if you really want the cart back, you know, I'll go ahead and just send it right back to you, and you can just refund my $20 back to my PayPal account. But uh, just the type of guy he seems like, I don't think he'll ask me to do that. And... Uh, I mean, it's in some of the best hands it can be in. I mean, I am collecting Atari cartridges, and I value the card itself. You know, it's just it's kind of a neat piece of nostalgia and history for me and just something that I'd like to do, maybe get a full collection one day. You know, probably 10 or 15 years down the road before that happens. But uh, there's over 400 carts that are NTSC, and then if you start counting PAL carts and all kind of label variations and, you know, unauthorized, you know, cartridges and homebrew cartridges, I mean, you're probably getting closer up to 800 to 1,000 cartridges or something that are out for the Atari, but, you know, I just want the main ones, maybe a few label variations here and there. I don't really care about the PALs too much, you know, the PAL formats, but but anyway, you know, he, he seems to be a, a pretty great guy, actually, you know, and I think he wanted to just let me know that he did find out the value, but uh, he was good enough to go ahead and send it anyway because he did close the deal and uh, I'd already sent the payment. And uh, that's just kind of interesting. He's a pr pretty good guy. And, uh, you know, I just told him if, if he is a collector of vintage toys, you know, he knows like me that you're looking for good deals on stuff. You're not looking to pay, you know, whatever a collector's price would be because, I mean, I'm not a reseller or a retailer. It's not like I'm an antique goods dealer or anything like that. I'm just a collector. So I'm going to look for a good price, you know. But uh, anyway. He's a great guy, and I uh, do hope to get the cartridge in a couple of days, and I hope it's in great shape, and uh, I'll show you guys when I get it. Hey guys, here's the last clip in this little video here. Did get my video saw color bar generator cartridge. Guy sent it just like he said he would, and he packed it very well. Pretty large box for just a single Atari cartridge, so it was packed very well. 
and a nice big piece of that large bubble wrap and inside that the cartridge was also inside of a, a Ziploc bag there and uh, it was protected really well so even if they crushed the box a little bit it should have been real good and safe inside of all that big heavy duty bubble wrap and it made it to me in really good shape uh, don't know if you can see it in the video there is a little bit of a scuff right there and just right there it looks like something might have been at one time dropped on this or, or laid on top that had a little bit of uh, weight to it but uh, doesn't really take away from the cart much sorry the lights not that great but you can see the labels in really great shape for being almost 30 years old I think this is about 28 year old cartridge um, but uh, the cartridge itself is in good shape little tiny tiny nick right there in the plastic and a little bitty tiny nick right there otherwise whatever it was that caused there you can see that mark on the label there it's just the certain way the light hits it it's not like it's cut through the color or anything because if you hold it like this it's kind of hard to even see it but it is scuffed you know just a little bit and whatever did that probably made these little tiny marks here in the plastic something got set on at one time but uh, you know this has probably been around in garages and attics and stuff for a few years and it's in good shape all the way around there's no end label that's the way these came no end label on it even though it has a place for an end label back of the cartridge is in really good shape no scratches really to speak of just those on the front just a couple little tiny nicks looks really good and it is a 9 on the rarity scale and it works I hooked it into my uh, Atari 4 switch wood grain console that's in the living room in there and checked it out and it works perfectly just exactly the way it's supposed to I'm real stoked to have it and just wanted to show you something I found out too I thought this was a, a unique cartridge type you can see the shape of it there but it is not actually a unique cartridge type I think I showed you in one of my other videos there's a company called US Games that makes cartridges and here's what some of their plain cartridges look like pretty standard square like cartridges on the back they do have a couple little cutouts there but pretty close to the shape of some other Atari cartridges but they have one version of their cartridges and a lot of these come in both varieties like uh, I don't think Mad does but I think some of the other ones like Entombed and there's some other ones uh, maybe Gopher I think it comes in two varieties here is the other variety and if you notice exactly identical to the color bar generator cartridge Oops, shape of it and everything it's identical the end where the end label goes see there's kind of a bevel to it there same way it is on here except there's no end label that came from the factory on these I know that light's not hitting too good there but <coughs> uh, excuse me in the backs here's the back of the color generator here's the back of the picnic cartridge perfectly identical all the way around these cartridges are the cases for the cartridges are identical exactly the same whoops dropped one of my cartridge at least it's the non-rare version and it's on carpet anyway so it's fine but they're the same again I'm sorry about the poor lighting but that's the way they look on the inside that's the color bar generator there's the picnic cart exactly, exactly the same way no difference at all so they got the cartridge for the color bar generator probably from the same manufacturer that US Games got some of these with the beveled ends uh, for their cartridges it's kinda interesting labels are put on where when you read them though they're opposite 
One faces one way, one faces the other, but hey. Anyway, that's my new Holy Grail. It's uh, a 9 on the rarity scale, and you know, I don't spend a lot of money on these, so that's that's pretty cool for me. I picked it up for 20 bucks. Uh, this goes easily online on auctions for around 200, sometimes more. If you had it complete in a box, it could be worth over a thousand. Um, last recorded uh, sale of it complete in the box, I think about two years ago on eBay, was four thousand five hundred dollars for this cartridge with its manual and its box, which is box is very generic since this wasn't put out like in you know retail stores. I don't think. I think it just had the manual telling how to use it and. Uh, kind of a, a plain cardboard box it just maybe had some some writing or a label on it or something you know it, it was more of a square box it wasn't a, a flat box that was shaped like a booklet or anything or a book but um anyways uh glad to add it to the collection and the guy was very honest and uh i wish nothing but good things for him in the future you know he found out the rarity of it Still decided to sell it to me even afterwards because we done closed the deal and I picked it up for 20 bucks. And that's what watching things closely on Craigslist can do for you if you look real close at the pictures and ask a couple of questions. So it's pretty cool. I'll let you guys go. Talk to you later.